explain Little Village to people outside of my community to be basically where all the Mexicanos are, you know, like it's a very like Chicano based um, neighborhood. So yeah, it's very artistic. You come into La Villita and you automatically see like, oh, like I feel like a flavor of Mexico in here. Some of them are folks that have been in the country and in the neighborhood for a very long time. Other folks are more recent immigrants. Little Village being like composed by like the communities that I mentioned before Henride um, and like other communities of color and low income obviously don't get the same kind of infrastructure and like resources right that other neighborhoods do in Chicago. Um, that being said, I think that the community has really created a beautiful place. idea, perception, opinion of what a Mexican community is like um, for many. I think that there are multiple truths to a story. While it is true that a uh, little village can be, um, it, it is Catholic, um, strongly Catholic, um, it's also true that little village has been home to the longest Oldest, longest running, oldest uh, drag Latin bar in the entire country. So to have these two coexisting, two, these two stories coexisting simultaneously is how it's different. I think that I was uh, very afraid of being outspoken and being expressive, being just being myself. But I think those were those were. A lot of that was internalized homophobia that I carried with me. And I think that I see a lot of that in Little Village. There's this fear. And so I have to go back to this sort of these dual stories that are coexisting in Little Village because for some people they have experienced um, uh, bullying. They've experienced, uh, they've had uh, bad encounters. But I also think that, I mean, for crying out loud, we have La Cueva in Little Village. <laughs> I do believe that Little Village is a li live and let live uh, type of uh, community where that's sort of the, the unspoken motto of the community. Hey! Hey! How are you? Good, good to see you. No. Everybody does their own thing. You were just gonna let me go out without my nose. I was gonna ask you to like, wait a minute. You're like, sweetie, something's off here. I think the attitudes in the LGBT plus Q community in Little Village is, I wanna say majorly just negative, only because it is a Chicano community and we have this machismo in the Mexican culture, which it's really hard to just, you know, ignore that. Machismo, for people who might not know, it's pretty much like, think of it as like a man who's being sexist. So it's like men, you know, typically Mexican men, because that's where the word really came from. Um, they would be like, oh, like, I want a woman that knows how to cook. I want a woman that would give me kids, you know. Um, a woman that every time I come back from work, she would please me, you know, basically like be focused on the, ma the males. 
and they would try to spread that too with their children and then like you see it a lot like just like women can't actually like be more dominant than a man can as in like oh they can't really go out and get jobs or things like that and yeah i do think in little village there's still that but i feel like it's getting better just because you see a lot of businesses here in little village and the majority of them are run by women so like kudos to them you know that's like awesome and yeah but i i know like behind closed doors that's still going on just because there's still the people that i've seen when i grew up and it's like i know you're not going to change especially when you're like this old you look like barnacle boy <laughs> <laughs> no sweetie I, my dad always says i look like that dude from the three spirits no that, but yeah. i'm telling you with the nose like why did i know that when i grew up like i was somebody that played with dolls i love playing with dolls like like for once, like I do makeup, like I'm a makeup artist. So um, I always pretended to like do their hair, or, like, you know, like get a pen or something and be like, oh, let me like do some eyeliner on this doll or something. And my dad would, you know, he would like scream at me. He would hit me and things like that. He would be like, stop, don't play with these things. And he would blame my mom for it. But it was really just me. Like I would do it behind my mom too. Cause I was scared that she would react the way my dad reacted with me. But she, he would blame it on my mom because you know, machismo man. And so yeah, um, yeah, they, they, my dad pretty much forced me. He's like, you have to be like this, you know, the very typical like boys don't cry kind of thing. Yeah. So my experience as far as um, someone who's Latinx and queer, uh, anytime I get this question about machismo, I, I immediately push back because my experience has not been that. Eso es normal. Aquí en toda Latinoamérica, desde el nacimiento, venimos siendo machistas. I think that the media has focused so, so much on this sort of issue with being authentic to yourself as a queer, transgender, bisexual, uh, femme, lesbian, whatever, right? And Latinx because of machismo being such a prominent component of our of our culture. While that is true, it's a it's part of a bigger conversation that we need to have when it comes to machismo because I think that machismo is this is something that um, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go there. Um, sometimes white I, this is like white culture tends to compare it's sort of like a way of saying my culture is better than yours because my culture, we don't have machismo. I like to have that conversation because it was a conversation that used to make me feel uncomfortable because, you know, I kind of, I'm like, I never experienced it though. Do you know what I mean? And I, I, at least now I have the language to sort of have a dialogue and a conversation around that. play with my mom's wigs. My mom, you know, would wear wigs in the 70s and she kept those in drawers and she should have she thrown them out, but she didn't, you know? Um, and luckily for me, she didn't because I got to play with them. I would play with her lipstick and, um, and my mom was okay with it. Like she didn't scold me. She didn't tell me that's not for boys. My father, on the other hand, he did have issues with it, but I don't have a memory of my father ever yelling at me. You know, my ma, I do remember my mother telling him, déjalo, déjalo, está bien. You know, and I think my mom knew that it was just me playing around, you know, like I, I was curious. And, um, and so I appreciate that because it allowed me to sort of, it, it allowed me, number one, to play with gender roles, but number two, it, the, it was the first lesson in my life of knowing that I had a family that supported me. And that was at the age of like, uh, like four years old. Religion, that's the interesting topic, but being Catholic and being gay in the church, it is hard. But I mean, I still follow my religion just cause I'm very spiritual, I guess. One of the preachers, um, when we were like giving thanks and like we were asking for like um, protection for from our Lord and our saints, we were um, he put in one of his lines. He's like, make sure that we protect the sick, 
the poor, and we protect those who are from the LGBTQ community because at this moment they need it the most. And, I, and when I heard that, I was like, I'm like, Dad, you hearing this? You know, like, I was just like, wow. I'm like, are y'all all hearing this? I'm like, don't ignore it. Like. I'll say this. When my mother and I had a conversation about, about me being queer, um, she said, you know, I think the church is wrong. I think they're wrong. And, you know, they say this, but I don't know, you know, priests are committing sins left and right. And, you know, they're human. And so if God didn't want you to exist, he wouldn't have created you. So I think that she needs, she, she found a space where she, within um, Catholicism, where she can love me and accept me and still hold on to Catholicism because for her, that's what she needs to do. For the most part, based on the stories that I've shared with my friends and what we've talked about, people that I have met, um, it's that live and let live. You know, I need to find a space where both, you know, I can, I can accept you as my family member and I can also pray and go to church, you know? But I know that um, my, my sister-in-law and her friends, they go to church and, but they go to La Cueva. I think that things are changing, you know, uh, because like, <laughs> you go to La Cueva on a Saturday night, a Friday night. It's packed. I mean, packed. It's kind of interesting because um, you know that these same people are, are going to church the following day. I'm not going to be blind and not acknowledge the the fact that there are others, other uh, people who are not able to talk about the fact that they're gay, queer, lesbian, that they don't, I, I have heard those stories too. And it's unfortunate. That's the one thing I wish we could change about Little Village, uh, the internalized homophobia that is still there within people who identify as LGBTQ+. You know, there's this fear not for everyone, of course, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't have drag queens on stage. And we do. And they sparkle. And they're pretty. <laughs> Among the younger members in Little Village, I feel like they are more accepting, for sure. For sure, social media is what's pretty much changing it. Just because, like, from what I know from my siblings, they're like, oh, like, yeah, like, my friends watch this person or my friends watch this person. Like, they all love how, like, their relationship is or, like, things like that. And they're more accepting for towards people of the LGBTQ plus community. From my group of friends, they were more understanding, too, but I feel like for them, it was because they were around me. really the first year you know really really good responses um, from folks prior to the march and then you know during the march as well um, 
I think I'll, I'll like never forget right once we were kind of marching down a residential area to um, you know once we were getting closer to the park there were families who came out and were giving like you know popsicles and things like that and you know some came out with like their rainbow flags and that was just really beautiful you know to see um, here in Little Village and you know march down as kind of your full self right and have your community be really excited <laughs> to see you I feel like it, it felt really really great. Nobody knew what to expect, but the people came out into the streets to applaud the dike march. And I'm sorry, like, uh, I think that for someone who grew up in Little Village, I th um, that was, it was very moving to see like women um, coming out and cheering us, cheering us on. I, you know, I kind of equate the, that experience with um, the family member who everyone knows is gay or queer or lesbian um, that goes to Thanksgiving that nobody talks about. Right, or we just don't discuss that topic. And to have been able to march through Little Village is is uh, sort of like that moment where you know not only talk about it, you say, "This is who I am. I'm here. You know, acknowledge me." And to be acknowledged by the community was wonderful. the march, um, I feel that I can come as kind of my full self, right? And when I say that, I can show up as queer, I can show up as someone who is an immigrant, right? Um, and I can show up and dress and however I want. And I feel like, you know, comfortable in even my own physical body, right? Um, and I also feel comfortable because there is the like assumption that folks who do come to Dyke March um, have that understanding of the space that it is, right? And in that it's trying to create. You know, what it means to me is being able to have that space where I live, right? In my own community of like showing up as who I truly am. So what do you want the kids to learn from you? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I want them to learn that being themselves and expressing themselves or, or in the art that they make, like it's all good just to keep pushing it and just to keep, it's like if you have an idea, let it come to light, you know, so I think that and finish projects. Don't be like me. <laughs> so me and my friend Diego, who is also gay, um, we created this little spin-off called Gigi and Didi. So our shows, like, we don't have, like, a schedule. We just, like, come on radio when we have shows to do, you know? So, you know, I'm Gigi. And I'm Didi. And so we're, we both love makeup. And Didi brought it up, right? You were yeah. like, girl, I want to do something with makeup. So honestly, like... We just wanted to have fun with it, and then we just started to like pitch in a little bit about our community and how like makeup is influential to us. I really like our shows just because pretty much we focus a lot on like LGBTQ plus um, issues. I was scared that we might not have gotten along. I don't know why. I just had that feeling. <laughs> what if like uh, we're just like two gays that are like no nope, competing, mm -hmm. I guess, or something? Where it's like. Tired of you. <laughs> he just snatches my wig all of a sudden, like, don't do it because, girl. And yeah, me and Diego, we have some trick ups up our sleeves, you know. Abracadabra, can't wait. <laughs> yeah, we're like this is the best duo out here, I guess, you know, trying to spread, you know, awareness in Little Village or whatever. And yeah, one by one, two by two, I guess that equals five. No, it doesn't, but yeah. The single most important act of that uh, form of activism that we can ever make in our lives is to be authentic to ourselves and to come out, whether, whatever that is. We were like in a suburb in Chicago and we were like, that's not Chicago. That's not Chicago. <laughs> but yeah, like the 
like the guests are so big like they were like it's so cold so I would say listen I would say who here doesn't have a plate to eat when they're sitting down at noon who here doesn't bleed blood who here doesn't have to put on their pants their skirts their whatever every single day in the morning just to go to work we all do so why don't we all just accept each other how we are